Water in nature is in constant transformation. This process has enormous power, enormous energy in it. So far, we've been able to capture energy as water comes down from the clouds, but we would like to capture energy from evaporation, which makes water go into the air, into the atmosphere. That process is very powerful. We haven't been able to capture energy from that effectively until now. Yeah, when I first heard of this product, it felt crazy. People are not used to thinking about energy in these ways or biology in these ways. This is really a unique lab. It brings together chemists, engineers, biologists. Every day it's kind of an adventure to be in the lab. It's exciting. When I met Oscar, he told me about this property he discovered in spores, even though they're known for being just dormant, staying put biological species. Bacterial spores typically exist in dry places. When spores see moisture around itself, it absorbs some of that moisture, it gets bigger. And when it finds a dry environment again, it shrinks again. This process is very similar to a muscle movement. It can expand and contract. We worked on bacterial spores for quite a while until this idea struck that their mechanical properties can be useful technologically. We deposit spores on plastic tapes. As you increase humidity, they can get much longer and they can contract to very small size very quickly. And when you combine many, many tapes together, then you can increase the force that they're producing. They can be now part of our device. The evaporation engine sits on the surface of water. And as moisture from the water surface enters the device, it changes the shape of the muscles. The movement of the strip is coupled to shutters. When shutters open, the moisture escapes from the device. When shutters close, evaporation fill the device with moisture. And in doing that, you can store up the evaporation potential and release it over time in a controlled fashion so you have a continuous power output. We call this second device moisture mill. We have a wheel with a bunch of our spore samples around it. And half of our wheel is placed into a humid environment and half of it into a dry environment. Because our spores are expanding when humidity is high and contracting when humidity is low, that means you have a very tiny mass imbalance on the wheel, which causes it to push forward for as long as the humidity is high in one half and low in the other half. Once you have a rotating device, you can use it for many interesting applications. You can maybe create a car. We connected the rotating circle to wheels, and the device started to move just like a toy car. I was so excited. Wow. You have the device here. It's not moving. It's not animated. It's dead. And then you feed it some water. And within seconds, it comes to life. It starts to animate. You can do your physics calculations, but when you actually see it turning, it's a completely different thing. There's an invisible power that is going through it. It's magical. For me, what this project has done is opened up a whole new way of thinking about biology. You can take this in so many different directions and you can come up with so many different ideas. We imagine this technology could be extended to off-the-grid applications away from society where one might not have access to the typical electrical infrastructure. It can integrate into products. You can have sport wear that will dynamically respond to if you're sweating or not. We can make a robot move its arms based on a pool of water that's standing above. Prosthetics. Batteries. You can connect it to a generator. Evaporation is so special because it is everywhere. We have 70% of the Earth's surface covered in water, and every single surface is evaporating away into the air. Our technology can also save lots of water because when we put device on the top of water, it will slow down the evaporation rate. Our energy future is not certain. Our water future is not certain. Evaporation can nicely solve these two problems at once. Evaporation can save water and produce power at the same time. So we created these devices to show what might be possible. 
but we certainly hope that it can inspire others to develop completely different technologies, completely different applications that we couldn't imagine and it could be a killer application somewhere else. That would be really exciting. Really exciting.